Forever Entertainment might not be a household name quite yet, but that is quickly changing. Besides getting the rights to classic Sega games such as Panzer Dragoon and House of the Dead, the company also has a working agreement with Square Enix, but the latest company working with them is now the big N with Nintendo. Now details are scarce about this, but Forever Entertainment will receive significant financial support from Nintendo to publish titles for the Nintendo Switch, which is a very interesting situation considering the latest work done by this company. Now while Forever Entertainment is a publisher, they do have an in-house development team called Megapixel Studios that is responsible for the Panzer Dragoon remake and the upcoming House of the Dead remake. So there's obviously a chance that we could see some forgotten franchise from Nintendo be given the Forever Entertainment treatment with some new visuals and quality of life improvements like we've seen them do with Sega titles and potentially Square Enix titles in the future. So in today's video I want to talk about some Nintendo games that could use something like this as a low risk entry on the Nintendo Switch to gauge interest in these franchises and talk about what would be needed to improve the games to bring them into the modern era. So if this is your first time on the channel be sure to hit that subscribe button and be sure to like the video but without any further ado let's talk about some forgotten Nintendo franchises that could see a resurgence on the Nintendo Switch due to this new deal. The first game we're going to talk about is a game that you probably didn't think would be on this list, but I think it makes perfect sense to be on the Nintendo Switch, and that is Mario Paint. Now, Mario Paint was a one and done game released back in 1992 on the Super Nintendo, but this game was really interesting because it was sort of a precursor to creation tools that are of course now readily available on PCs, but also video game consoles as well. With Mario Paint, as the name suggests, you could of course make your own little painting and artist creations, little cartoons and things of that nature. You could do some small animated stuff within the game as well. There was music creation too. And of course there were some mini games sprinkled into this. But the real thing that made Mario Paint very attractive to consumers was of course that Mario branding on it. And that extended into things like stickers that you could use in the game, featuring various Mario characters such as Mario himself, Luigi, Yoshi, so on and so forth. Of course, the Nintendo Switch does have a touch screen on it, so that would be something that I would definitely put into the game to make it sort of more modern so that people could use something like a stylus that's maybe included with the game to create your own sorts of creations when it comes to drawing things. But I think one of the areas that they could really expand upon is the aforementioned stickers because now you have so many popular Nintendo franchises that people would want to include into this game and include in their own creations. Of course, another thing I would focus on is including some online creation sharing, whether it be the small animations, artwork, or even music. And you can really create a big community with this game based on the community creations that people are going to be making with it. It's been over 30 years and it's definitely time to see Mario Paint come back. Now speaking of remakes and remasters, before we get into the next game on the list, I do have to give a huge thank you to the wonderful 101 Remastered for sponsoring this video with their brand new Time Attack DLC. The cult classic on the Wii U is now available for your Nintendo Switch, PS4, and Steam with the wonderful 101 Remastered. Now whether you're a new player to the game or a seasoned vet of the original, there's new stuff for you to enjoy with this game as the first batch of free DLC has just arrived with Time Attack Mode. Take on your favorite wonderful 101 levels in a time attack mode where going fast is everything and then upload your fastest times to the online leaderboard system and see where you rank against the rest of the heroes in the world. Can you beat my fastest times? I mean, maybe. There's more DLC coming to the game too, so the content will be flowing for a while. Don't know what the wonderful 101 remastered is? Check out the Wondersize Cadet demo to get a feel for the zany action that this game brings to the table. And the best part, after you play the lengthy demo, the game is currently on sale on the Nintendo Switch eShop and Steam, meaning you save money. Check out the link in the description box down below for more info and a huge thank you to the wonderful 101 Remastered for sponsoring today's video. Next up is another forgotten franchise for the Nintendo platforms, and that of course is Golden Sun. Now when talking about Golden Sun, we had two entries on the Game Boy Advance in this JRPG franchise, one on the Nintendo DS, and then, well, it just kind of went away completely. I'm guessing that Golden Sun on the Nintendo DS did not sell all that great, and we haven't seen Golden Sun in quite a while, but I think the original Golden Sun is a perfect candidate for something like this because, well, you don't really have to do all that much when you think about it. 
Golden Sun has a great story. It has an interesting character with Isaac. The gameplay is tried and true JRPG stuff. The battle mechanics work great in the game as well. All you would really need to do with this game is do some visual improvements and of course some basic quality of life improvements, which is what Forever Entertainment does. I think one of the main things that they could do with this game is give it sort of that Octopath Traveler style visual style. And since this company is working with Square Enix as well, that wouldn't be too hard to do because Square Enix would probably let them use the tools to create something like this. I think Golden Sun would look absolutely fantastic in this visual style, but even if they didn't go in that direction, really just cleaning up the graphics and adding in some small quality of life improvements would make this game still feel very modern. The main thing I would do is have the enemies on the overworld map, as that is pretty standard in most JRPGs nowadays, and I feel like most people like that when they're playing their JRPGs, so they sort of know where the enemies are on the map. But beyond that, Golden Sun doesn't really need all that much. The gameplay still holds up today. The battles are fun. The story is very intriguing and deep. And I think Golden Sun, the original Game Boy Advance game, would be a perfect candidate to get a remake for the Nintendo Switch. One franchise that I see a lot of people wanting a new entry in is of course the F-Zero franchise. And I am a fan of the F-Zero games, but there's one that sticks out to me that would be a perfect candidate for this, and that is F-Zero GX. Now, if you've ever played F-Zero GX, you would know one thing. This game is fast. It's fast as hell. And the original GameCube game actually ran at 60 frames per second, which I think would make a perfect transition over to the Nintendo Switch. Now, much like Golden Sun, I don't really feel like you need to do a lot to this game, as the game was already chock full of content featuring story modes, versus modes, and local multiplayer. The visual style of the game still holds up today when you play the Nintendo GameCube with progressive scan using something like a GC HD adapter, and I really think that this game would just need a little bit of polish in terms of the visuals, maybe bring them up to 720p or 1080p if possible, and keep that rock solid 60 frames per second. Now, as far as new content would be concerned, I think the main thing that we would want to see in this game is, of course, online play. Some of these races would be absolutely chaotic with multiple players playing online, and while you probably couldn't get the full 30 players online, I think something like 8 would be more than sufficing enough for a game like this. F-Zero is definitely a bit of a high-risk franchise when you're talking about making a new entry in the series because F-Zero really hasn't sold all that great. But remaking F-Zero GX with a new coat of paint and some online features I think would be a very low-risk entry for Nintendo to do. Forever Entertainment would make some money off this as well because people like F-Zero and I think this would be a great addition to the Nintendo Switch library. Sort of sticking with racing franchises, we have one that started out on the Game Boy but didn't really get notoriety until the N64 era and that is Wave Race. Now, of course, we also had a Wave Race game on the Nintendo GameCube, but for me, Wave Race 64 would be the game that I would definitely like to see a remake of, because once again, this is a game that I think would really benefit from it. Of course, when we're talking about playing N64 games in the modern era, you have one of the biggest complaints out there, and that is, of course, the graphics. They're kind of blurry. There's lots of fog. They don't look all that great. And I think under all that fog and blurry graphics, that Wave Race 64 is an absolutely gorgeous game. And this is a game that, once again, you really wouldn't have to do all that much to improve it for the modern era. I definitely think that this game could be a budget game like we see with most Forever Entertainment games, around the $20 to $30 price range, and really all you would have to do is clean up the graphics once again like you would have to do with F-Zero, and of course put in some online multiplayer. You could have a leaderboard system for the fastest lap times, and of course some competitive racing as well. But I think Wave Race 64 is a game that just wouldn't need all that much stuff. Sure, you gotta tighten the controls up a little bit, but this is pretty much what Forever Entertainment does with games like Panzer Dragoon and House of the Dead. It's right up their sort of alley for something like this, and of course, like all the other games on this list, it would sort of gauge interest in this franchise. Is this franchise popular enough to get a full-on new game for Nintendo to publish? But since Nintendo wouldn't have to worry about the development side of things, I think Wave Race 64 would see a great improvement on the Nintendo Switch and would be a game that a lot of people would enjoy playing if just for that nostalgia factor with these new visuals. Now the final game on my list is probably a game that 
I don't think anyone else would have this on their list, but this is my list and I'm a selfish person, so we are going to include it. And that is Geist. Now, you probably did not play Geist on the Nintendo GameCube, and I understand. It was sort of a weird game, a darker game, a more mature game from Nintendo. But Geist is an absolutely fantastic game that even at when it released, it could have used some better visuals. So I think putting this game on the Nintendo Switch would be absolutely awesome. Geist is a weird game to sort of describe, but essentially Essentially at its core, it's a first person shooter, but you play as a ghost because you're dead early on in the game and you could basically possess different things within levels. Now taking possession of things like uh, fire extinguishers, rats and things like that, you can use that to then scare individuals in the levels and then take possession of them when they are scared, thus turning it more into a traditional first person shooter where different people have different clearance levels and things like that in order to get deeper into the levels. Now because of all the different things you can possess in this this game it really makes the game super unique but like I said at its core it's still a first-person shooter which we haven't seen Nintendo do a first-person shooter since well Geist now of course besides the visual improvements in this game I would definitely include some online multiplayer but I think the story in this game is still unique enough to where people would want to experience something like this and I still feel like it's relevant in today's era just being able to possess different things within the levels and sort of figuring out these puzzles is one of the most creative things we've ever seen in a video game. And unfortunately, this game just completely bombed. But I think it would find new life on the Nintendo Switch with a remake, improved visuals, and online play. Now before we wrap things up, there is one other game that I want to briefly mention to be put on this list because I feel like people in the comments would yell at me. But I didn't put it on my main list for one main reason because I don't know who really owns the rights to this game and that is Eternal Darkness. Now Eternal Darkness was of course a GameCube game, a fantastic game, a sort of weird third person adventure horror themed game, but I feel like there's some sort of stuff in the back end with this game as far as who actually owns the rights to it and that's why we haven't really seen anything from Eternal Darkness anytime soon. Now I could be completely wrong on that, Nintendo may just actually own everything, but I didn't want to be wrong and then have people yelling at me in the comments like, hey stupid! Eternal Darkness and Nintendo doesn't have that anymore or something like that. So I just wanted to mention it. If Nintendo does have full licensing for this game, I would definitely love to see Eternal Darkness added to this list as well. Alrighty, so those are some forgotten Nintendo IPs that I feel need to be on the Nintendo Switch. And I feel like this Forever Entertainment deal could open the door to things like that because these are games that maybe Nintendo themselves doesn't want to create a new entry in, but the classic games could just use a new coat of paint, some quality of life features, and still be very successful successful on the Nintendo Switch. So let me know in the comment section down below some games you would add to this list, games that you would like to see Forever Entertainment possibly work on that are forgotten Nintendo IPs, games that we haven't seen in a while, and games that Nintendo just doesn't really seem to be caring about. And as always guys, thank you for checking out this video. If you are new to the channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button, be sure to turn on notifications as well. A huge thank you to the wonderful 101 Remastered for sponsoring this video. Make sure you guys check out that link in the description box down below. And as always, I will catch you guys on the next one. Later.